After the death of Queen Elizabeth II, many members of the royal family are getting new titles. Prince Charles has become King Charles III, while his wife, Camilla, is now Queen Consort. Prince William and Duchess Kate are now the Duke and Duchess of Cornwall and Cambridge, with a possibility of becoming the Prince and Princess of Wales later on. Even three-year-old Archie and one-year-old Lilibet, Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan's children, have become a prince and princess with the ascension of their grandfather to the throne. As for Harry and Meghan, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are unlikely to get any new additions to their titles. The couple stepped back as senior members of the royal family in early 2020. Though they still retain their Duke and Duchess titles, Harry and Meghan no longer use their HRH designations. Although the two probably won't experience title changes, their kids are now technically a prince and princess. Traditionally, the change in title is an automatic right with the ascension of a new monarch. In 1917, King George V established protocols that granted the children and grandchildren of a sovereign to be automatically entitled to the titles His Royal Highness and Prince or Princess. At the time of their births, Archie and Lilibet were the great-grandchildren of a sovereign and therefore had no royal titles. However, it's still possible that King Charles may revoke the newfound titles from his grandchildren. While the Princess of Wales has proved a model royal since joining Britain's most famous family, making poised public appearances while avoiding the harsh criticism doled out to her sister-in-law Meghan Markle. Catherine, who married the now heir to the throne Prince William in 2011, stepped up appearances as his grandmother Queen Elizabeth II retreated from the public eye. Kate has since given little away about her experiences in joining the royal family, unlike her sister-in-law Meghan, who married William's younger brother, Prince Harry, in 2018. Prince Harry was often photographed at events with his brother and Kate, seeming to feel relaxed and warm in their company. When Meghan appeared on the scene, the couples appeared to get on well, prompting predictions that the foursome would become the face of the modern monarchy. Kate was inherited many of the Queen's jewels after her death. Queen Elizabeth, who died Thursday at age 96, had one of the largest and most expensive private collections of jewels in the world, and at the heart of it are around 50 stunning tiaras. Some of the pieces, her crowns and brooches, as well as ceremonial maces and rings, form part of the crown jewels, which are displayed at the Tower of London and are gawked at by around 2.5 million tourists a year. This priceless collection of mainly ceremonial items, some of them going back 800 years, belongs not to a person but to the crown and whoever is the monarch. Similarly, there is the royal collection, which contains most of the royal family's extensive artworks the largest private collection in the world, and their jewels. Altogether, it makes up more than one million objects, some of them going back to the time of Henry VIII. The royal collection is in itself divided into two portions. The bulk of the items are held in trust by the monarch of the time. And then there is the Queen's personal collection. This is mainly made up of items she inherited or was gifted by family members. Her grandmother Queen Mary was famous for her love of jewels and was a particular fan of tiaras, or bought herself. Many of Queen Elizabeth's recognizable tiaras are believed to be in her personal collection so, in theory, she could give them to who she wanted. It is likely that she would want to pass on items from her private collection to her loved ones, royal commentator Josh Rom told the Post. The bulk of the collection will pass to Charles, with Camilla as his queen consort, and then Kate, so they may not be left anything big, in the will.